I think we were, we were, so we'll get we were connecting that with uh, the Camelo School. Okay. So the so Camelo School reached out to you and then specifically, yeah, what happened and, from there? Um, so it, <clears throat> for us to uh, to do that, we had to make, raise more money. So we started doing fundraisers and uh, raising more money because what we have to do is we have to have – our teachers must be fluent in English. We don't have Thai teachers. Well, we do now. We have a couple of Thai teachers. Uh, but we usually have teachers who need work permits, visas, um, and then they, have a, they get paid a salary, which is not like salaries in international schools, I can assure you. Um, and we have to cover all of the costs for everything, for teaching aids, everything. We teach English for free. The only thing that the school provides us is the space. And um, our teachings are part of the curriculum. In the first year or two, it was just we were teaching English. But then it became, it was obvious how good it was. So uh, we're part of the, we have the CES program and uh, we're now teaching not just English, we're teaching uh, science and mathematics in English as well. And um, we have... Um, one, two, three, four. We have five teachers currently. We had seven, but we had to cut back financially. You know, time set when us. When did that start at the Camelot School? Oh, um, only about two years after we started. So, so about 2008, 2008 yeah, or so. nine, yeah. And that's it's a massive school. It as is well. a massive school. And they, when we started there, we were unaware of the fact that the school had a dormitory, where a lot of the children that lived there mm -hmm. were. Uh, victims of the tsunami that they either didn't have parents they were orphans or their parents couldn't take care of them uh, at the time there's about 120 or so children now you would think over the years those children have grown up and so there's no where that school now has more than 200 children living in that dormitory just and how many kids are going to that school so about 700 wow but uh these kids, it, it's still happening all the time here, that there are a lot of orphans, um, there are a lot of parents who can't take care of their children, or maybe they're from the provinces, from poorer families in the provinces and things. So yeah, I, know, I know there's a charity up by the Lock Palm Golf Course, and they're kind of like, it's for orth orphans, but mostly from the Patong area, because maybe their mother is this, or their father is smoking that, or whatever. But they are you involved with that one as well? Uh, I forget the name of it. Um, where is it? It's basically if you're uh, at the Lock Palm Golf Course and you're taking the back road to the British International That's School. It's not Sunshine Village, is it? Maybe. Uh, I'm not maybe. sure. No, we sort of all uh, try and help each other yeah. with different things. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's it just takes a lot of time we, and we struggle a lot and we have to raise funds all the time. I mean, people sort of go, oh, you must be a rich charity now. You, you make so much money from these events. Mm. The money comes in the, the front door and goes out the back door so fast and we have to plan a year ahead because we have to plan for our teachers and the, uh, the programs for, uh, for the students and the whole things. And yeah, we're people, definitely not a rich, rich charity. I mean, people don't, they need to understand what charities, I mean, like you said, you have to hire teachers. The money has to go somewhere. How does this thing run as well? Mm. Um, I'm certain people, they can't do it for free as well. They need to survive. Yeah. Um, I mean, we have a, a director <clears throat> of operations who's been with us now for about 12 years, Tina. Uh, she is amazing. Um, yeah. I'm the, uh, uh, chairman of the board of managers and and that means nothing uh but some you know often people say to me oh so, so what salary do you get and i go i haven't made one a tongue in in the all the years that's not what it's about you know if you if you if you do these things you do it because you want to do it uh yes tina earns a salary she earns a salary because this is her job and she, she works seven days a week. She's on holidays at last in the UK to see her mother. Yet I'm on Facebook with her you know, every day doing things. She's, she's amazing. We have a wonderful head teacher, Jerlyn, who is, is, is just um, super and, and, and our teachers uh, were great. We have two, uh, we have a Thai teacher now who came from the Princess Songkhla University 
Um, and we have another one who's doing trainee as well. Um, if you enjoyed this content, we're doing five clips like this a week. If you want to watch the full podcast, click here.